because teachers, prepared teachers, people were not that plentiful now. Whether you want them or not, you just couldn't get them. See? You couldn't get them. Yeah. So I went to set them off, you see, and uh, asked them to study, you see, so it was like that. And they came back to me, see. Mm -hmm. I hired them and they came back. And as a consequence, in, uh, in, in, in 1925, Lincoln became a high school. I mean, yeah, yeah, 20, 25 first high school class. And in 1920, what is it, 26, became the first accredited high school in the state of Florida for blacks. In 1926? Lincoln, in 1920, 26 it did. 26, Lincoln High School and, and uh, Union of uh, uh, the, the, the school in uh, Palatka there. Was it Fez? Uh, Fez, uh, no, no. Okay, I'm back in there, school. Uh, anyway, the school, black school in Palatka. Uh -huh. uh, those two Care, schools so. were the first two accredited high schools in the state of Florida. Now, how did you black. get that accreditation, uh, Professor Jones? Well, they sent a committee, I mean, a State Department of Education, before you become accredited, why they sent a, had a, or something on the visitor school, and they checked the records and everything, and they had to meet, uh, you know, specification standards uh -huh. that set up by the state for accreditation. And that was, that was to your credit too, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. That you were running a That's quality right. school back as early as 1926. 1926. Mm -hmm. And would you say that all the boys and girls that left your school got the basic information that was needed to survive? They did, because they had to meet certain standards to become a credit. Your curriculum and everything else had to meet state standards. Uh -huh. See what I mean? And they uh, become a credit while they met those standards. Four years of Four years of, uh, uh, two years of English, so many years of science, so many years in mathematics, you see, and, and such as that. Mm -hmm. You had to meet those special standards you know, and all become credit. You've just listened to an audio clip from the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program's diverse collection of oral history interviews as part of our 50 Years, 50 Faces fundraising campaign. In the last 50 years since the program's founding in 1967, SPOP has collected over 7,000 interviews, as well as provided equitable fieldwork opportunities for students. To support our program's mission to document the voices of people from all walks of life, visit our donation page through the link in the description, or visit our website at oral.history.ufl.edu. That's oral.history.ufl.edu. SPOP, one community, many voices.